Okay, welcome to final part of week two. Now, I would like to focus on moral behavior or misbehavior. It's an interesting example because it shows that on one hand we can uh, do a really, really cost-benefit analysis when thinking about our future behavior, but also it shows us uh, our irrational part when uh, we are trying to judge ourselves and see and uh, summarize our morality. Also, cheating, stealing and other immoral behavior are important for the economy and also has huge influence on consumer behavior overall. What is dishonest behavior? Stealing, cheating, other forms of cheating and lying, those are just a few uh, examples of uh, immoral behavior. Morality and moral behavior are a huge part of our lives because every now and then we judge morality of ourselves or others. Morality and dishonesty in this case are also important aspect of our everyday economy. Dishonesty it's a huge problem for many societies. This example is uh, from 2013. It shows that in UK, only in UK, there are almost 200 billion costs of fraud. It's a lot of money. So if you summarize that year to year, the sum is enormous. But but that happens not only in the uh, United Kingdom, it also happens in the uh, 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 Netherlands. So, for instance, they, uh, in research done in 2013, they found that tax fraud uh, was really costly. Health card fraud uh, or fraud related to social benefits uh, cost uh, the country quite a lot. Also, Dishonesty is a huge problem for cybercrime and other types of misconduct or social abuses. You may say that, yeah, but those are just extreme examples of dishonesty and lack of morality. Think for a second about your own experiences, maybe about uh, your own behavior. What do you think? How often people lie? What's the lie frequency? Lying is uh, one of the uh, best examples of uh, minor immoral behavior. Let's take a look at some papers. Research found um, in 2010 that uh, at least 40 percent people let at, uh, at least once during four, 24 hours. Is it a lot? Across all participants the average was uh, 1.65 so almost two lies per 24 hours. Of course uh, probably some people lie more often some people less often but still that's interesting number. When you analyze only people who lie, on average, liars tell four lies. What's more important, prolific liars. It's not a large group, but those people, they lie very, very often. Because in this study, they found that 1% of uh, liars were responsible for 23% of all reported uh, lies. In another study by DB and all, the results were similar. A little bit more people lied during 24 hour period. There were 2.19 lies uh, and also uh, there were more prolific liars. 
9% from the whole sample were responsible for 51% of lies. That's a lot. It means that, uh, that quite a lot of people lie, but also a large group of participants lies very often. You may think, okay, but why people do that? Because lying, for most of us, it's not a pleasant thing. Of course, sometimes uh, a lie can be planned and uh, carried out uh, carefully. Sometimes a lie, it's just a mistake. Nevertheless, that can impact uh, our relationships um, and also our own self-perception. Dan Harley was thinking about um, yeah, why people lie and how still they're able to think about themselves positively. So he came up with a construct called Fetch Factor. What happens is that when people do think about their own morality, they typically rationalize about it. They include um, in their thinking an idea that, uh, yeah, maybe they, uh, they lied, but they were just small lies. And this thinking that, that those lies were simply minor or the misconduct was um, meaningless, then that's the way how they can protect uh, their own self-esteem. They justify their own self-esteem, self-evaluation by thinking that they were just small things. And that's why they can uh, feel congruent and they, we can conclude that our morality is okay even though we've lied, but they were just small lies. And that's a way how people uh, implement this fudge factor into their thinking about their own morality. That's the way how we justify, rationalize uh, about our morality. When talking about morality and um, how we create our self-perception and evaluation of morality, how this fudge factor is implemented and how we justify based on this fudge factor our uh, actions. He often thinks about morality as a specific, um, let's say, analysis of costs uh, and benefits. Let me cite his, uh, one of his uh, talks. He says that in economic theory, cheating is a very simple cost-benefit analysis. What's the probability of being caught? How much do I stand to gain from cheating? And how much punishment would I get if I get caught? And you weigh these options out, you do this simple cost-benefit analysis, and you decide whether it is worthwhile to commit the crime or not. So, uh, if a person comes to a conclusion that it's worthy to, uh, to make a crime, then probably he or she would do that. And later on, when thinking about morality, she will find this fudge factor that will help them uh, to justify that they are moral. Typically, people think, at least uh, according to the research, that small lies do not matter. The problem with this kind of theory uh, with this specific theory by our alien colleagues is that uh, a group of uh, researchers in uh, recent years they've been trying to replicate this effect. Unfortunately, it was not possible to confirm this effect. So still, this fudge factor can be seen as a hypothesis. Okay, let's move on. Let's focus on other research. You may think that there may be some specific reasons or factors that cause that people lie. In this research, they found that some aspects, social economical aspects, can uh, be related to uh, dishonesty, immoral behavior. First of all, 
they found that people from upper class are more likely to break the law when driving. So more rich, more rich people um, break the law when driving. Rich people or upper class individuals are more likely to exhibit unethical decision making when, for example, uh, deciding uh, upon other people's future at work. They also found that uh, they can still take valued goods from others way often than uh, people from lower class lie uh, during uh, negotiations and also more often cheat to increase the chance of winning a prize. And finally, endorse unethical behavior at work. Think for a second why that happens. Why people, rich people or upper class people, they tend to lie more than people from a lower class. Is it related to some of the biases, heuristics? Let's discuss that in an online meeting. In this research, they also found uh, mediation effects, but they are less important than the main effects. So let's focus only on this one. In these two final slides, I would like to show you other specific determinants of immoral behavior. We know that uh, people tend to uh, lie, we know too that people tend to cheat and do other things, and also we know how people uh, evaluate their own morality. Now let's take a look at specific situational determinants of dishonesty, immoral behavior. In this research, uh, Sophie van der Zee, she was trying to show what determines specific uh, cheating under different types of uh, conditions. In this situation, people were facing an investment. They were asked to invest uh, into a specific stock and then they could um, they could benefit uh, or not from this uh, specific investment. When doing the investment they uh, were experiencing an unfair situation and later on at the end of the uh, procedure, they were given a uh, uh, lie opportunity. If that was also an element of the procedure, if their idea for investment was accepted, then they were subject to uh, get accepted. During the analysis of the situation, they can um, they've got either um, false feedback or non-feedback. And later on, during the procedure, at the end, this uh, lie uh, opportunity was about um, lying to gain extra money. So as you see here, in this experiment, situation was about making an investment. Then after sending a proposal, people were getting feedback. And then after the feedback, they were confronted with a lie opportunity. So they, they could either freely lie or they could say the truth. There were three overall conditions. So either specific proposal was accepted or participants were fairly rejected, or third condition, they were unfairly rejected. After the rejection, they had this opportunity to lie. Let's take a look at the results. If a proposal was accepted, none of the participants cheated. If they experienced fair rejection, part of them were cheating. But substantially more people were lying, actually more than 23%, when they experienced unfair rejection. Think for a second. 
What are the real life implications of this experiment? Do you think that people who feel that they are unfairly treated, would they behave more honestly or less honestly? How would that influence the consumer behavior or other types of behavior related to functioning social context? Thank you for your attention.